Yo, what up, world? This is your boy, Faith Up Sam. This is another take of tap, 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 tap. Tap in! So, for the past few episodes, we've been discussing friendship, and now we're on friendship within the church. So, come on. Let's ride! Yo, yo, yo. <laughs> Back to another take of tap in. As I said before, this is your boy Faith of Sam, and I'm here chilling with the crew. What's up, y'all? Hello, 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 everybody. This is your beautiful girl Evie. Hola, konnichiwa. <laughs> this is your girl Big M. Not the little one. Yes. Yo, for another one. And for another one. Yes, sir. Yo. Um, ready for the top bit, bro. Get ready for it. Uh, ready. Big shout out to, you know, some of our fans, man. Um, yes. The people that subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, what have you commented to? You're right, man. Yeah. So we drop a, um, last week we dropped an episode on um, the Zodiac sign. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we had a few comments, right? Um, don't worry. We, we will eventually respond to your comments uh some of them were really good and i I think we should respond to them directly for sure so you can wait for the next episode we'll definitely address those um comments all right so here we go we've been talking about friendship man and and now we're moving to friendship within the church yes um ready so tell me how do you navigate conflict resolution and the church relationship Conflict resolutions. <laughs> how, how do we navigate that? That's a big that? word. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's a big word, man. I'm sorry. Well, let's try to break this into layman's terms. Let's break it down to layman's terms. <laughs> break it down real quick. I was right. I'm sorry. Yes, can you all have a little bit simple? I'm like, what? Like, how do you resolve issues within your church relationships? Issues, okay, so if we're talking about, like, issues with, like, peoples that you have, uh, with peers, amongst peers in the church. Yeah. Uh, I feel like you go about it how the Bible tells you, man. Take time apart to just talk to that person personally. You know, give it, you know, once, two times, three times, two times. And then, ain't nothing go, ain't nothing happens. Bring somebody else to it, preferably, in my opinion, a leader. Um, And then from then on, try to bring somebody else. And if nothing crazy... The Bible said bring it to the church, but if at that point you got to bring it to the church, just squash the beef at that point because <laughs> don't people be trying to OD it to get to that point because people just stubborn. Don't even try to get to them. Just at that point, you should just be all right. Just be like, ah, it's all cool. Forgive and forget it. For me, um, the resolution, resolution conflict. <laughs> 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 we said dumb it down. <laughs> Conflict resolution. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, just flip, just resolution. flip it around. Flip it around. <laughs> to me, um, conflict resolution in the church, to me, it all depends on what type of relationship I have with that person. Like, if I am having a conflict with Yvonne at the ch- in the church. Evie. I, oh, Thank you. Evie. Let's Evie. That. I won't, I don't think I will take it to like uh, the committee of the church, the pastors. I'm going to try to Work it up between us. Mm-hmm. Now, if it's like somebody who I don't know, like I'm away from a can of paint, then I'll be like, okay, I don't know this person. I don't know what's her issue. I don't know how to go about speaking with this person. I don't want them to take it, anything I say in the wrong context. So I need like a committee to speak with. Hmm. Because like what, what I'm thinking about, because you just gave the example of Evie. That that would fall into personal relationships. That's what I was going right? to say. Right. So when I'm thinking about relationship within the church, like we have to work together in the church, right? And we are a community of people with different mindset um, that's coming together. And the only goal, the only uh, thing that binds us together, which is the best thing ever, is Christ. Right. It's our relationship with Christ. You know that binds us together. Uh, so the brotherhood and sisterhood that we are able to um, uh, maneuver around is based on our relationship with Christ, right? So people like that, like you have a relationship with them, 
not as personal as a relationship with Evie. So if I have a problem with somebody that I work with on a spiritual level, how do I resolve that issue without creating uh, a gap between you and that person and without creating chaos in the church and without creating, um, without pushing that person away, you know, uh, because if that person is spiritually weak, you could actually push them right out of the church. So how do we, how do we manage that, you know, um, being Christians, right? Knowing the Bible, because we might know the Bible, we read the word in the Bible, but we don't apply it, you know, when, when necessary. So how do we go about resolving those issues without? I think, I think for me, what I was thinking is understanding that, you know how the Bible says we're not fighting against flesh, flesh and blood. And blood. Mm-hmm. So if, cause sometimes, and I had, I had to read and I had to meditate on that to understand sometimes and the issue is not your brothers and sisters. Don't just take, you know, don't just, don't just head down, try to communicate. If we are two Christian, we are doing God's work and there is a problem. My thing is the first thing is we need to pray. I learned this with my friend. I remember we had an issue and then everybody was ready to fight. Like, Hey, let's go. And then the first thing she said, she said, okay, let's pray. Let's listen to the sermon. We pray, we listen to the sermon and I promise you everything changed. Then everybody was, we were ready to listen to each other. I think we should involve God in it. We read the Bible. Okay. I have a problem with you. Yes, we are human and I'm not perfect. I'm not saying I cannot be mad. I cannot be upset. Like give me the chance to explain, to express my emotion. But after that, let's talk about it. Cause if we, we are doing it for God, we're doing work and we know, cause I know sometimes there's people that you have an issue with and you cannot even worship. You cannot do anything in church. And that yeah. happened to me. And God had to put me in that situation to understand. And it's like, my heart is not even in church anymore. Like, I do not want to do the work. Okay, so let me ask a question based on something that you said earlier. Do you believe that in church, the devil is able to use someone? Yes. Yeah, for sure. Yes. Yes, I do. I definitely agree with that. Because... I feel like church is a hospital. Not everybody. We, I'm not. I'm not expecting for someone to come and to be filled with God's spirit. You know what I mean. So I know the devil gonna use somebody at the church. The devil used Peter. That wasn't with, like close that, to that's Jesus. That's what I'm saying. I'm not talking about the person is not a Christian or anything. But like I'm that. saying, like, I'm talking about the person is a Christian, but at their moment of weakness, the devil can use. Can the oh. devil use that? Person? But but it is for possible. me. But it is for me to understand that though, because if I don't understand that the devil can use somebody close to get to me, then the job gonna be done at this point. Because the devil's gonna try to remove me from my position, and then by getting to me through somebody close to me that I probably trusted, I feel like betrayed. Then he's doing the work. So it's for me. I feel like in order for me to resolve a problem that I have in church, I have to be able to resolve that problem within myself first to understand how I can go about it. Me. I feel like sometimes, like, uh, I mean, that the question of really just how to resolve, like, those issues, you know, in the church is, in my opinion, like, it's just very difficult because, again, you're, you're, you're still messing with, like, um, people who's either, you're still going to be surrounded by people that, who's probably not as spiritually strong, people who's just weak, or some people who is probably spiritually, you know, strong, but you're, you're dealing with different types of people, so... Of like course, egotistical. Yeah. And... Some, some people are prideful. Some people's very nice, though. Some people, you know, very mean. Some, like, you're dealing with a whole bunch of different... Like, though we may be Christians, though you may be a Christian, but that doesn't change the fact that you can still be a... Human. Yeah. You can still be human, meaning there's some parts of you, some parts <laughs> of your characteristics. Now you can still be human. <laughs> you are human. <laughs> right? Because the separation is the Holy Spirit, right? Yeah. The, the, like, I always say this, there's nothing good that comes from us outside of the Holy Spirit. Nothing. At all. Right? Because uh, I think Peter said that. He said, you know, I think of doing good, but whenever... I, I, Paul? I, I, yeah. Paul said that. I, yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, he said, I think of doing good, but the bad is what I always choose to do. You know what I mean? But So yeah, it, sure. it's, it's our nature, right? Yeah. But the, the grace that God has given us through the Holy Spirit allow us to be the people that we are, you know, allow you to be kind, allow you to be patient, allow you to have uh, self-control and everything else that comes with it. I have seen, I have seen this on Instagram today. Um, it was a video of this guy, he walked past the video and then, but they were doing like this interview. And one of the guys that was in the interview, he said something uh, because the guy had walked past in the, 
and throughout the camera, he was like, bro, he just walked. He seen his recording. And one of the guys in the interview was like, he said, do not contribute to malice what can be contributed to um, uh, incompetence. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I'm thinking to them, I'm like, yeah, that's actually, that's actually that's real. Deep. That's deep. That's real deep for real. So I'm thinking to them, I'm like, okay, now that can really, understanding that can, in a way, can help me understand grace a little bit more. So even even if for real, like there is a conflicting issue in the church, and even if it don't get resolved, like at the end of the day, as Christians, whether you're spiritually strong or not, we're still reading the same Bible. So how can at the end of the day you show somebody that you still show somebody grace? How can at the end of the day, like whether this problem do get solved or not, how can I still show you grace? So it's like it's like like resolving those issues, I think, in my opinion, there's gonna be some issues that's never gonna be resolved. It's just more so like the whole resolution to those problems may not be like a like a two plus two equal four type of thing. It's just two plus two equal God at that point. It's just Jesus. We just came to worship and we just want to watch it, bro. I'm going to just move on. Okay, since you said, you just said something about at some point problems will never get resolved. So my question is, like, if I have a job at the church, let's say, okay, I'm a worship leader. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If... I have a problem with somebody and there's no type of resolution. Should I continue what I'm doing at the church? And my, Even if the uh, the problem is... My thing own. is... My thing is, it's like... Think of it as of like a... Okay, so there's, there's a song we sing in church, you know... Basically, for God to move whatever that's in his way... And whatever took his place, you know, for him to dwell... dwell. Mm-hmm. Yeah, dwell. That's dwell by dwell, J. Tom. Yeah, so... If we're if we're saying that, then in a way you have to add, you have to put a problem into that as well. Yeah, you, you can say that a problem can maybe that's not resolved can be that thing in your way. Can probably could be in the way of you worshiping God. Now, how to go about it? I really don't know. I don't got all the yes. I ain't Google. But at the end of the day, it's like the main thing is is like how do you respond even if the if even if the issue is resolved or even if it's not. I feel like that's the that should be like the main focus on how do I go from here, even if this problem goes because it can't be years later and I'm still thinking about this problem. Not even, let, let's not even go that far. No, it, it, it could be like months later. Months later, but months it's later you're still thinking about this. Do you know that I like I've observed you know like I've been in church all my life. Yeah, I think the most stubborn people are in church. I think stubborn people are in church. I, I think you know and. There's one thing, and our culture plays a, a part in, in, in that as well. Uh, because if you don't know anything about the Haitian culture, um, sure. you know, the our, our elders think that, you know, we have no say-so, you know, amongst them. And that that's, it's a wrong mentality, right? And I was not raised with that mentality, even though I am from the islands. Like, I was not raised with that mentality. Yeah. Um, but because of that, uh, they have ego. Right. So if you point out something to them, you know, that they are doing wrong, it's hard for them to admit that, you know, they're doing wrong. So they rather stay stubborn. Right. They they rather stay in their lie. Right. And maybe mask it. With it's other easy. Things. It's easy to point fingers than it is to point fingers. At correct. Yourself. Correct. So it's hard for you to to uh, address anything with, you know, people, you know, but, that, that have that mindset. But the thing is, that's bad, though, because it's just like, now I'm thinking about it, it goes against everything that God is saying. Like, one of one of the things I remember in the Bible, God said, it, before you can give me offering, if there's an, if you have an issue with somebody... You go resolve it. You go you resolve it, your, your because offering. you bring your offering. Yeah. Even if you, even if you were, if you were not the person, you know... Correct. Even that, if you were not the one at fault, like, you should be try to resolve those so, issues. So, think, think like, in the line of what you're saying, right? Remember what, you, what, what you're about to say, right? The Bible also tells us that, you know, I think we said this on this podcast a lot. If you cannot forgive the person that is next to you, how do you expect God that you don't see? To forgive you, like that, that that's hypocrisy. But even but think about but, but but think a little broader on that one. If you can't even forgive somebody in a problem that doesn't even get resolved as well, that's that, I feel like that's also a factor. How do you pray to God that you don't do not see and expect Him to forgive you? Exactly. It's hypocrisy. But the, but the thing is, the Bible is expecting us as a Christian to be the bigger person. Because you know you know the verse I said if if one he you you know I never understand this verse like I was saying like why why I'm would not I turn let... the other cheek <laughs> yeah I, I don't think it's <laughs> being the other. bigger person <laughs> no because if if <laughs> if, if Caleb right the uh, sea breeze is doing wrong 
as a brother, right? I should be able to point it out to him. So this is a misused verse in the Bible, right? Judge not and thou shalt not be judged. Ooh. <laughs> right? Ooh, let me get on that too. But look, let me get on that. What is the second part of that verse? For in the same measure that you judge, you will be, you judged, will be judged as well. Yes. yes. But we don't talk about the second part of the verse. Uh-uh. The uh-uh. verse does not say for you not to judge, right? It just, but it's just judged. expect to be judged the it's same way. Judged. So if I'm able to point out what's wrong with you, right? I should expect you to correct me the same way. If not, I'm a, I'm a hypocrite, right? I'm a hypocrite because we supposed to iron sharpen iron, right? We supposed to sharpen each other, right? So we reading these verses, but we're not applying them when necessary. You know, we're not applying them to our daily walk, you know, with each other as we walk with Christ. Because what's the point of going to church? It's for the community, right? Mm -hmm. Because I could read my Bible at home. Yeah. I definitely could pray at home, right? So everything about the church is community. It's not about one person. Family. Like, respect all pastors, but the church is not about the pastor. At all. Right? The church is not about the members. The church about is about the community of, 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 you know, God's children, right? Christians coming together to worship God, right? But we take all that away from it. And we make it about us, and that's why we can't, you know, have any resolution for our conflict. Yeah, even so, like I just pulled up this verse, you yeah. know, Matthew seven, Matthew seven, three to five. It says, um, "Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when all the time, when all the time there is a plank in your own eye? You hypocrite! First, take the plank out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. So it's like, and mind you, this isn't red. That means Jesus speaking. Jesus speaking. So, oh, um, <laughs> we all know what that means. You can be, if it's, it's red, it's red. It's, it's red. So the, the king says so. Exactly. <laughs> this is him speaking. Hey. So it's like when I read that verse, it's like it's so. I, I remember I was talking to my dad about that, and I told him, I said, I'm so tired of people remembering so clearly everything that you've done to them right but don't but remember no the thing that they did to the, to me no or to anyone no accountability so like i think about that and it's like it's like and mind you it's like as a leader it's like how can you really show a person you know that you're leading okay so in my opinion mm-hmm. i don't even think this is my opinion i think this is biblical facts mm-hmm. you know i don't read the bible i don't read the whole bible but we'll see but anyways um yeah, like um, as a as a leader, you're supposed to be leading people to nowhere else but Christ. Simple as that. Nowhere else but Christ. Fact, maybe fact. fact. Y'all let me know in the comments. Uh, facts, hundred percent facts. So when I hear that, I'm like, okay. So when that means when a leader is speaking or when a leader is reacting, they must make sure for real, for real that they must. If anything, they, they got to be quick to second guess everything that they do before somebody else who's not a leader does. Bro. So meaning if. If I'm going to act in a certain way, I have to make sure, one, that if I'm telling somebody that what they did is wrong, I got to look at myself. myself first. I got to check myself, really see something in my yeah. eye before I tell them he got to take something out of his. Like, and I told my dad, I'm like, I'm tired of that because it makes no sense. If I'm if I'm talking to one of my friends and dog, like whatever, we can hash that out. We could talk about it, whatever. But it, it's annoying. And it's and it's in my opinion, it's very to really get to, re, to really be blunt, it's, it's demonic. Yeah, it, well, it's, yes. it's demonic for as a leader, you do not even see the own plank and the own hurt that you can cause somebody. Yeah. You can't even see that, but yet you feel that you're so blessed to lead someone, but you can't even lead yourself. Correct. So I, if you think about annoying. it, like Jesus Christ is the greatest example of leadership. Well, Jesus Christ should be the greatest example of leadership in the church. As he should, right? yes. And how did Jesus Christ lead? Right, he he was a servant. I was gonna say that to others, right? Facts. And I I think leadership now is shift dog to where these leaders want to be praised and, yes. and honor and glorified. Glorified. You're not gonna take God's place in my heart at all. You're not gonna take God's place in my in my life. Like Jesus Christ is who I serve, right? So this is about Him. It's not about you, right? So if we have something going on between us. And as spiritual, you know, brothers and sisters, we should be able to fix it without me having to like, you know, worship you or you having to worship me. Right. So we should we should look deep inside our hearts and 
like we, we always tell people to have the mind of Christ. What is the mind of Christ? He didn't allow the 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 woman, the prostitute, to get stoned. Yeah. What is the mind of Christ? Right. He he went into a tax collector's house. What is the mind of Christ? Servitude is the mind of Christ, and we and should think it. about it the the same way. Like we should be in service of others, no matter what, at all times. No matter what, man. Even like, even if, and this goes back to the to the to the topic too. Be a servant to even those that you have a problem with that's not even resolved. Even to those same very people. We don't got that problem resolved. I should still be able to I serve. I should still be able to but serve. But when you said problem not resolved, like I have a problem with that. Because if we go in the Bible and God says, if if you have a problem with one person, try to fix it. If you cannot fix it, go to the next. If you cannot, I mean, God wants us to resolve this problem. So it shouldn't, it shouldn't be if I have a problem, especially like when it comes to, you know, one thing you said and then, in our culture, I see people do a lot, and I do not agree. Leaders, they will do something to you, and they want to move on. You know what? what? Let's trust that. Like, let's move on. I'm, no, it doesn't work like that. I don't. No. I, I do not care if you feel whether you're in the wrong. You're like, you know, what? it's okay. I, I mean, I'm so sorry. Let's move on. No, I need you to talk about it because the same energy you had before. Let's keep the same energy so we can resolve the problem. But they do that a lot. So they like they want you to move on. But that, that's how you place problems under the rug and pl- things never get resolved because you feel you, like like people look at church and they think you know the church is is the perfect place to be christ is the perfect person to follow right um like heaven is perfect god is perfect right us as human we are broken yeah. We, we are broken. And the only thing that's keeping us together truly is, is God, you know, is the spirit, the Holy Spirit, you know, is the love of Christ, you know, like that's what's keeping us together. So when somebody bring all their brokenness and never resolve whatever past issues they have, it's hard because we're talking as leaders, like I, I'm a leader, right? I've been a leader in my church for years, right? So I'm talking to myself as well. Yeah, right. So we got we got to check ourselves. <laughs> well, we <laughs> you know, we got we got to <laughs> check ourselves. <laughs> we got to check ourselves, man. Yeah, we are leaders. We are leaders. Sometimes we make it all about ourselves, and and it's not. It should be about. Christ. I feel like this day and age. Well, this day and age, like you know how the Bible said, uh, you go to this person, then bring this person before it gets to the congregation. We don't do that. It's it's not that mm. we don't do that. It's hard to do that when you see. Everybody, like, let's say a, ch- a committee has a church. If everybody in the committee like this, they're going to be for each other. So whenever that person did to me, it's never going to get resolved because they're always going to say the other person's place. I mean, well, yeah, I, when I, when they I, were, even if I didn't fix the problem, they would never give me the platform to take it to the congregation. Even if, am I, you know, when I, when I hear that verse, like, I feel like there's a difference between something wanting to be done, then it should be done or it has to be done. So in my opinion, when I see, when I hear that, when I see that verse and I read that verse, I'm thinking maybe I could be wrong. You know, that would let me know in the comments too. But um, like maybe that is God letting us know that he wants us to resolve a problem. But that doesn't mean that even in all the time that we want, that he wants, that he wants that problem to resolve, it will be resolved in my opinion. I believe, because again, we're still dealing with humans. Yeah. We're still dealing with people who got stubbornness. So there's a chance this problem won't be resolved. And so it's like, in my opinion, I feel like the resolution may come from, hey man, I'm sorry. Even if you wasn't even the one at fault. Because at the end of the day, because sometimes even as people that who, who in the midst of two conflicts, I believe my philosophy and a problem, it's always both parties. In some, in some aspect, it's both parties. At some point, he got fault, she got fault. You know, I think it's always both parties. So it's like, at some point, you have to say sorry, because even in your own eye, like like the, what I just read, you probably didn't even realize the own thing that you probably did, even when you probably were trying to resolve the issue or in the midst of that issue. So you caused the person to be able to act out even worse. So the problem got to the point where, now nah, I can't even take it to the church. Or I don't even want to bring people in it because you're making it crazier. But even in that point, like, I feel like, you know, that getting to that point of, uh, I'm sorry, I feel like, it, or resolving issues, I feel like it takes humility, too. Mm-hmm. It takes humility to the point where, hey, man, 
I don't I don't remember everything that I did, and it's not my intention that I did this, uh, that that I made you feel this way. But I'm sorry. Mm-mm, God that, in my that's, heart. That's I, hard. It's, it's hard. hard. It's I know. Hard. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I'm not saying it's hard. Like it's impossible. I'm, no, no, no. I'm it's not, only not, hard because hard of the ego. But, but I'm it's not going to do it's it. Though. Ego. It's, it's, not gonna do it's ego. Though. I won't do it. If I know, like, let's say every month is me and you, we have a problem. Ain't no way you can't step up to me to realize what you did to me. I'm not going to keep bowing down to you. Oh, I'm sorry. Even if you don't want to no, say sorry. No, that's just one time. For us, for <laughs> us to move, be. Just time. For us to move on, I'm going to come to you and say, I'm sorry. Even if I know I did nothing wrong, I'm not doing that. Hey, sometimes you, you're At not this even, point, you don't I'm know giving, everything. I'm opening the door for you to do that to everybody else. You're never going to realize that that's you correct. have and your problem. We, we do that a lot in church, man. And, and you know, you? an excuse is, like when we we're talk, talking about the zodiac signs and everything else, one of the excuses, you know, that's just who she is. That's just yeah. who he is. Now, <laughs> <Tommy John! laughs> Look, the, the Bible says that when we came to Christ, we became a new creature, yeah. right? We became a new creature. Like we have a renewed heart. Yeah. Your heart can be renewed, and like you still rude and disrespectful. You like you you still like if somebody says I'm still the same person I was before meaning that you you need to go back and accept christ because you you don't you (laughs) don't have christ in your life because he said he's gonna make everything new Mm. you know once you plunge you know under that water he said that all the sins you know everything that you had before you know die and you resurrecting with christ if you resurrected with christ man you should have the mind of christ you shouldn't be the same person you were two years ago. At all. You know what I mean? You shouldn't be the same person you were before you become a Christian. And I think that that's, that's something that we encourage in church. You know, it's an excuse to say, oh, ah, you know, that's that's just how this person that's what, is. That's what they do, you know? especially with leadership. Yeah. They do that with leaders. Oh, uh, that's just your pastor. No. Just, they're going to do that. That's what they no. do. Leave but we, we I can't said, do no, that. It's like, it's like we are promoting like bad conduct like like bad behaviors like that don't make any sense if your child goes to school and you know like it start acting up in the class and the teacher calls you and says hey so and so is acting up in my class like he's being disrespectful like he's you know uh speaking out of turns and you're gonna say ah, he's a child that's just my child that's how that at home. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're gonna come home you're gonna God. get it <laughs> like i bet not receive any calls from that teacher no more okay and you gotta correct bad behavior but i think in church, we support bad behavior to the point where the person becomes stubborn and they think, you know, they're always I don't think I don't think it'd be intentional for people to support that. But it's like, and like I said, like you have to be mindful, especially as a leader, what you say and how you act. So meaning as a leader who watches another leader who does something wrong, you can't tell me that's how they act. No, 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 no. You as a leader, you go, should, you you gonna tell me, hey, what she did was wrong. I'm gonna go haul at her. I'm gonna go haul at him. So like, Fix it. You know, I understand what happened. Me as a leader, I've seen it. I'm going to go talk and just try to handle this. Because in that conversation and in that, you're letting that person know that this issue was wrong and we're going to prevent it from happening again. Sure. But if you tell a person that, oh, oh, it's just them, not only are you not resolving the issue, but you're telling that person it's going to happen again. And, it's okay and I'm not going to do nothing. And it's okay if it happens again. It's okay. It's like you're not gonna... That's ridiculous. We understand this We're... who you are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's dumb. I'm going to turn the other cheek. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't... Um, Big M said something about like, if I have a problem with somebody, it's going to be hard to bring it to the church because, you know, everybody's like together. But I feel like that's why church should have committee. That like, you should have, you know, a group of leaders that come... Uh, no, the church should, should have a... An unbiased committee. Yes, yes. An unbiased so a committee, committee. A committee of a church is supposed to represent the church body, not not a group. So I'm saying, so the, the church should have an unbiased committee where you can go to the people and be like, "Hey, I feel like Big M did me wrong," and they should bring both of us together. And okay, I want to hear your opinion. I want to, you know, so there's always two sides of the story. I want to hear it always. now. Now, how can we fix it? Based on scripture, I don't want to tell. I don't want you to tell me because Big M is bigger. I'm, she's older than me. You should just that accept last it. Thing, I'm like, as I used to, I'm tired of it. Bro. <laughs> I'm tired of it. Bro. Like she's older, or you know what? Let's just know. Like as we are both Christians, so how can we fix this to move forward? Because I feel like a lot of people that's like, especially youth, that's running away from you know, like the church, and it's just like their souls. Like imagine God is telling you you need to bring souls, and then you are what. 
chasing people chasing away, them away. Chasing, <laughs> chasing them, away. them away and because of problem you could have resolved there like when God gonna ask you what did you do with this person and this is something that needs to be addressed right because we have parents like <laughs> since we in the church we have parents you know who had a past but they refuse to tell their kids about their past right because they are ashamed of their past yeah. right but what makes you think that child is not gonna repeat the same thing that you did because generational curses exist that's a, that's a thing right? man that's a so, thing so so if you went like, let's say you got pregnant out of red lock. Let, let, let's say you got pregnant early as a teenager. Like, I think that's something that you should share with your, with your child and, 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 and actually educate them on, you know, what the problems that you occurred, you know, that, that you went through, you know, why, why you were going through that, you know, process, uh, uh, or that time period and how they can avoid it. You know, I think it's necessary for, you know, parents. And when I say parents, I'm talking about leadership itself, right? Yeah. Like, to share the experience with, you know, others because you, you make it seem as if, like, you are this perfect person. And even though you are older, even though you are wiser, even though you have more experience, you're still not perfect. <laughs> like, even in that verse, too, when it says, you know, parents train your child as the way that they should, uh, train your child in the way that they should go, people don't, parents, I feel like parents don't really understand the way that, that they should go. They don't really understand that. Because in my opinion, that, that I feel like that's a, the best way that you could probably train your child in the way that they should go. Letting them know that this is what happened. Think about it in the Bible. The Bible's full of past things. But yet, that's how we know God. That's how we know not to do a certain thing because Moses did it. Or Peter did it. They did that. That's how I know. Because it's a past thing. So literally, the Bible is a, is a, is a book of things that how we should live like. Because of it's a book of filled with people that they did things wrong so we can be able to learn. Right. So if 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 your parent if a, if a parent not even being that vulnerable, uh, yeah, it, it's tough. You gotta you gotta be that man. So that goes for leadership too, man. Be vulnerable, be humble, man. So um, I think we could close out with this. Right, <laughs> right I was gonna say. I think so, we, answer, we answer the question. The way that you resolve conflict within the church. Uh, if you want to use a biblical scripture, Matthew eighteen verse fifteen to twenty, it says. Uh, if your brother sins, go and show him his fault in private. Right? Private. First step. First private. Step, first step. First step. Private. If he listens, pay attention to you. You have won back your brother. Mm. Right. But if he does not listen, take along with you one or two others. Second step. But wait, wait. It says take along, meaning go to them as well. Correct. In private. Correct. Do that in take private as well. In private as well. Yes. So that. Every word may be confirmed by the testimony of two or three witnesses. Yes. Oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> we gonna edit that out. No, 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 no. That one is saying. <laughs> you know, we gotta, I gotta stop playing, bro. I'm playing with fire. You gotta stop I'm playing. playing with fire. My fault. It's Dan. <laughs> <laughs> We are not deleting that. Buff up. Buff up. So, like, when, when I said, like, reading the Bible is so enlightening, man. Like, it, it, you know, in order for you to gain wisdom, you must read the Bible. Flash. Like, I, I think it will allow you to be humble, allow you to be wise. And then the next part was, if it, that doesn't work, then you take it to the church. Like, how do you apply that in today's church? I don't know. I don't know. Um, but I would say to try your best to do the first two. Right. Like to resolve your issues within the first two uh, um, uh, sentences of this verse. Uh, because it'll go a long way. At that point, I feel like that problem by step two. It should be resolved. It should by, be. By, yeah. step two. by step two, it should be yeah. all right. If it's, if, it go, if it's at that point... But with, within your stubbornness, like you might, you know, I'm right, you're wrong. You know, I'm going to stand <laughs> on it. I'm going to stand by my words. Stand on um, words. And, and next thing you know, like you allow yourself to be used by the devil because, um, you know, when when you start talking about, you know, people people are nosy in church, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, tell me about it. Uh, <laughs> what, what something is going on in the church, like everybody's going to know, bro. And, and you're going to have to tell a story. Right, yeah. whether you make a, make one up or or whatnot, you're gonna have to tell a story. And within I ain't that making one up, man. Th th this what happened. <laughs> <laughs> I did that to me. It's noticeable, like to me, it's it's more noticeable if you're active in the church. 
Yeah. Like, if I was doing more, you know, all of a sudden I stopped for six months, people gonna stop asking. They gonna start asking, hey, you okay? Why don't I see you? Work? Oh. And I I'm, need to stop messing with this girl. I'm that you. testimony gonna come out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna let y'all know that. I'm I got a testimony too for that. I'm it's gonna come from. The truth and nothing but the whole truth. Oh, yes. Yes. So help me God. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happened. So, uh, it's, it's gonna get, eventually it's gonna get to the pop game. I'm gonna tell him. 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 Person calling this person, you didn't hear what happened to this person. No, what the hell is crazy? <laughs> the church is so nosy, bro. So like, nosy, bro. <laughs> hey, but I, I love the church, man. I've been in the church all my life, and I don't plan on going anywhere. Period. Um, you know, like wherever God leads me, like it will definitely be a church. <laughs> like, <laughs> most definitely, you know. Um, I'm grateful for the church, man. I, I think the church community is a great community to be in. I great think church. the church community is extremely positive. Uh, surround yourself with positive people in your church. Surround, um, yes. Because or, if 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 you have one or two or three people that you know don't understand you or you don't understand and have conflict with, you will easily run away from church. But it's not everybody in the church that's like them. Remember that. Uh, it's not everybody in the church that's uh, 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 egotistical. Yeah. Uh, it's not everybody in the church that's stubborn. It's not everybody in the church that's hurtful. It's not everybody in the church that, that are hurt and they look to hurt others. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. not everybody in the church that's looking to up somebody else. Yes, Bishop. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, let it's them know. Not let everybody, the know. It's not everybody in the church that's there for their own selfish interest. Yeah. Um, there are great people in church. Yeah. And if you find a man or a woman of God, that really takes God serious and that really deep down and read and understand their Bible. Stick beside. Yes, man. Stick and, beside. And, and your life will be different, man. Uh, your life yeah. will be there because those people speak life into you. Those people uh, speak positivity into you. And those people are able to point out your wrong with love. They are able to correct you with kindness. You know, all, all the attribute that, that Christ meant for us to have, uh, you'll find people in church that have that. So just take your time and find those people with those abilities and, and those, you know, that have that responsibility. And, and hopefully your church life is healthy. Uh, and your church life is um uh, yeah, it's healthy. Right? Yeah. Trust God that he will reveal those people too as well, man. Correct. Pray God and trust, don't trust that you, that you will find those people that God will also, trust that God will also lead them, lead you to them or Correct. they will come to you, you know. And also Correct. for you to be that person too. Exactly. Trust yeah. that even if when you're looking for that, Correct. you, you could, could be, be that, that person, person. You could, for you someone could else. definitely be that person for somebody yeah. else. Yeah. So big shout out to Pastor Reggie. Pastor Y'all, <laughs> yeah, hey, Pastor Deacon, Deacon JP, Deacon, you guys Yo. are hard. Uh, we Yo. love you guys, and uh, may God continue to bless you guys. And hopefully, yes. somebody uh, that was listening to us learned something. Uh, we love you guys. Don't See forget next to tap time. in. Don't forget. Even to... if you're watching a video and talking bad about it, you still tap in. <laughs> <laughs> If you didn't like it, at least leave a comment. Leave a comment. Say you don't yeah. like it. Let us know how you feel. Yeah. Leave right. a comment, at least. It helps. Regardless, that being. And then, so and then next go. time we'll talk about Boy Killer, you know, chicken and talk. Cheers, cheers, we cheers. definitely got to address that. That's on and off. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, comment, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Tap in the Audible Podcast. Follow us, yeah. Uh, follow us on the IG. Uh, same thing, Tap in the Audible Podcast. We are on Facebook. Hey man, we're trying to grow here, man, and we need your support. So let's go. Ta 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 ta. Let's go.